Welcome back to the channel. Today's topic is four top things the banks prefer you not know. Although we use banks every day in our lives, do we really understand how banks are basically built for making themselves money? Robert Kiyosaki, author of the best-selling financial book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, says banks run the world. After watching this video, you may have a better understanding on the truthfulness of that statement. Let's get into the video. Fact number one that banks prefer you not know. 1. Fractional Reserve Banking In the United States, the specific law that allows for fractional reserve banking is the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. The Federal Reserve Act is a law that created the Federal Reserve System, which is the central banking system of the United States. The Federal Reserve Act gives the Federal Reserve the power to establish reserve requirements for banks. Reserve requirements are the minimum amount of money that banks must hold in reserve, either in cash or on deposit with the Federal Reserve. To meet the demands of depositors, banks are required to hold a certain percentage of their deposits in reserve and can lend out the remainder. Let's look at an example. Assume you give bank a $1,000 deposit. What do you think the bank will do with the money? Because there is no benefit to keeping it to itself, the bank lends your money to someone else who, for example, wants to purchase a car or a house and gets interest on the loan, which is frequently considerably bigger than the pitiful 0.5% it pays you. Credit cards typically have an interest rate of 20% or higher. Between the two sums and the money the bank gives you there is a significant discrepancy. The important thing to remember is that the bank will not reveal to you, the depositor, that the moment you hand your money over to them, they have the legal right to lend your money out to another person. If you check your online account, however, the bank will always display that your funds are still available for withdrawal at any time and that they are still in your account. What source did the bank use to obtain the funds it lent to someone else if your money is still in the bank? That legal sleight of hand is called fractional reserve banking. Banks are only permitted to keep 10% of the deposits. The other 90% must be lent. For every $1,000 you deposit, the bank generates an additional $900 and lends them to someone else, bringing the total to $1,900. The bank created $900 out of nothing, essentially of out thin air, but with the full backing of US federal law. It's not as difficult as you may think, since the computer just creates these dollars on simple computer screen. This dilution of the dollar, plus the rate of inflation, make your money worth less than it did the moment before you handed it to the bank. It appears Kiyosaki's statement about banks running the world does indeed hold water, as well as our money. To the second fact banks prefer we do not know is the concept of the bail-in. If you lived the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008, you remember who banks too big to fail were rescued by the federal government through federal bailouts. The Frank Dodd Act of 2010 Congress passed the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Act in January 2010 which eliminated the option of bank bailouts but opened the door for bank bail-ins. What exactly is a bail-in? Well, if a bank runs into financial trouble and is close to failing, it can now seize the accounts of depositors, your hard-earned money, to pay off their irresponsible debts. It happened in the country of Cyprus in 2010. In 2013, the government of Cyprus implemented a bail-in as part of a larger EU bailout package for the country's struggling banks. This meant that large depositors in the banks including uninsured depositors, faced significant losses as a portion of their deposits were converted into bank equity. The bail-in was controversial and led to protests in Cyprus, as well as criticism from some EU officials and financial experts. The move was seen as a departure from the precedent of depositor bailouts that had been established in previous bank crises. In the United States, there are no specific regulations requiring banks to notify depositors about the possibility of bail-ins. However, Banks are required to provide depositors with information about deposit insurance and the terms and conditions of the deposit accounts. In the next banking crisis that we will face in the United States, bail-ins will be the rule of the day, not bailouts. Prepare accordingly. The third fact the banks prefer you not know is FDIC insurance on depositors' accounts is limited in scope. The following information is directly from the FDIC website. Depositors should note that federal law expressly limits the amount of insurance the FDIC can pay to depositors when an insured bank fails, and no representation made by any person or organization can either increase or modify that amount. FDIC insurance covers depositors' accounts at each insured bank, dollar for dollar, 
including principal and any accrued interest through the date of the insured bank's closing, up to the insurance limit. FDIC insurance covers all types of deposits received at an insured bank, but does not cover investments, even if they were purchased at an insured bank. What the FDIC covers. Checking accounts. Negotiable order of withdrawal, now accounts. Savings accounts. Money market deposit accounts, MMDA. Time deposits such as certificates of deposit, CDs. Cashier's checks, money orders, and other official items issued by a bank. What the FDIC does not cover. Stock investments. Bond investments. Mutual funds. Crypto assets. Life insurance policies. Annuities. Municipal securities. Safe deposit boxes or their contents. U.S. Treasury bills, bonds or star. It should be noted T-bills are backed by the federal government. The worst case scenario for depositors is a situation where massive bank failures of several banks occur at the same time. The FDIC does not have the funds currently to insure all depositors. The FDIC currently has far less money in its fund than it has insured deposits. As of September 1, 2022, about $41 billion in reserve against $6 trillion in insured deposits. There are over $9 trillion on deposit at U.S. Banks, by the way. So more than $3 trillion in deposits is completely uninsured. Also, in a bail-in, how would depositors be treated? According to the FDIC, in a joint paper by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and the Bank of England. Written in 2012, unsecured creditors as it happens, unsecured creditors are quite important with the FDIC, appearing 11 times in the 18-page document. Unsecured creditors should thus expect that their claims would be written down to reflect any losses that shareholders did not cover means we'll tell you how much you lost after we divvy up the take, P6 para 12. That could also point to lowered insurance limits without notice, if any insurance is left at all. What would happen in that scenario? The FDIC would likely look to the federal government for help, in what would likely be the biggest bailout in U.S. history, or not. The fourth fact banks prefer you not know is that they do and t have to tell you what they are investing your money in, and many of their investments can be high risk. A prime example of this is the 2008 financial crisis, where several large banks in the United States and Europe invested heavily in subprime mortgages and other risky financial products, which ultimately led to significant losses when the housing market collapsed. This resulted in many banks having to be bailed out by the government, or in some cases, being taken over by other banks. As a result, many depositors lost a portion of their savings, as well as the value of any investments they had in the affected banks. Another example is the collapse of Lehman Brothers in 2008. It was one of the largest investment banks in the world, and it had invested heavily in the subprime mortgage market. When the housing market crashed, the bank's assets became worth far less than its debts, and it went bankrupt. This caused a chain reaction of financial problems, and many people and organizations that had money invested with Lehman Brothers lost a large portion of their savings. It's important to note that these events were not only caused by the banks themselves, but also by a systemic failure of the global financial system. It's also worth mentioning that many banks have implemented significant changes in their risk management procedures and regulations have been tightened since then. Okay, so those are the four facts banks prefer you not know. If this video provided you value or new insight, please subscribe, share and like, as it greatly helps our channel. Thank you for watching and come back for more videos on personal finance here on the Money Pig channel. Bye for now.